Hello again. All right, so we've covered folklore. Now, to remember these five types, fables, myths, legends, tall tales, and fairies, just saying the word probably isn't enough. You probably actually need to see a fun looking chart that describes this, you know, how do you distinguish these two? What are the characteristics or qualities or traits that tells you, hey, this particular story is definitely a myth. It's totally not a fable. Oh, this is a legend. There's no way it's a tall tale. <laughs> you tell them apart. Da -da -da -da. What are these fun tables? <laughs> I know, you couldn't read that. Don't worry. I'm gonna hold it up and I hold it nice and steady. Okay. I haven't read this myself. Folk tales can be fairy tales. Right? Fables, myths, legends, and tall tales. All right. Here are some characteristics of fairy tales. Uh, they usually start once upon a time. There's royalty and animals, a castle, a forest, good versus evil. That's a huge thing, the good versus evil stuff. Uh, let's see. There's magic and there's often a repeat of three or seven. These are magical numbers. For example, the seven dwarves in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Or the three little pigs. Or you'll get three wishes. Oops, I'm trying to get the camera to go up a little bit and it's totally not. <laughs> or you'll get three wishes. So three and seven are special repeating numbers which is interesting. Um, okay, so we know a lot of fairy tales. Disney uh, Studios, when they make movies, animation movies, in all throughout the 20th century, they love fairy tales. So, there are so that's why there's so many Disney princesses. Rapunzel, Snow White, Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, all of those were originally fairy tales. Ariel, the Little Mermaid, from the Hans Christian Andersen story. These stories were written about 100 to 200 years ago with those characters, with those names, and those events, including Rapunzel, Mother Gothel, all the names and those major events happened in those, in those uh, fairy tales. So fairy tales are extremely well known in America because they were turned into popular movies. Now what about fables? Fables involve animals who can talk and behave like people. Um, there's usually three or less. If fables are very short stories. They are generally outdoors somewhere because that's where animals live. There's only one problem and it typically involves trickery, like the boy who cried wolf. And it ends with a moral lesson. Fables, talking animals, moral lesson, theme, those are really tight characteristics. Those really go together. But it's not until sixth grade that you'll get a short passage and you'll be asked, is this an example of A, a fable, B, a fairy tale, or C, a myth? That's fifth grade stuff. At your grade level, you'll be given a fable and asked, was the, was the theme A, being lazy can cause problems, or you shouldn't be lazy, uh, you shouldn't be, um, hmm. you, shouldn't, you shouldn't take naps, talking about the, the tortoise and the hare. The answers might be A, you should not take naps, B, you should not be a rabbit, C, you should not be lazy and overconfident, and the answer is C. <clears throat> as an example of the theme for that story. Myths. Myths involve gods and goddesses. Now you might, it's possible, you might be asked if which of these is associated with stories of gods and goddesses, myths, fables, and fairy tales. Fairy tales are kings and queens, myths are gods and goddesses. It's possible that at third grade, you're expected to know that distinction. <clears throat> 
Myths explain something that happens in nature by using a story about gods and goddesses. For example, um, why do pine trees never lose their leaves in the winter? There's some explanation. Oh, it's because of this god and that god. And these stories involve um, a cast of characters of gods. Greek mythology, there are dozens and dozens of Greek gods. Indian mythology, Hindu mythology, there are many, many gods. And um, Norse mythology, like Norway, Sweden, the Norse gods, there's a whole, it's called a pantheon. Pan means many, theon means theo, god. So in Norse mythology, there are many gods too. And they'll talk about, oh, thunder happens when the god so-and-so is in his is is at work you know he's he is making a new sword and when he's striking the hot iron to get his sword nice and flat that creates thunder in the sky so natural phenomenon will be explained by oh god so and so is doing such and such you know every time it rains the goddess something or other is watering her lawn those kind of stories uh, there's a lot of magic there could be unusual creatures like unicorns um, and it often will teach a lesson. Quite often, the way the gods interact has some kind of theme or moral lesson, like the way that the animals are interacting in a fable. You might find character, you know, the, in myths, um, the gods can have negative personality traits that cause problems for them and positive personality traits that solve problems or prevent problems. Uh, so, 